What motivates a person to become an activist? How might someone's political identity be shaped by their personality and life experiences? Activism is defined as any action that an individual or a group takes on behalf of other individuals or groups to affect change in society. But what factors might influence one person to become politically active while another person becomes less engaged? In this course, you will learn some of the theories that explain individual motivation for social change and use these theories to better understand how people become politically active. A primary resource within this course is a series of case studies of nine renowned women activists who have contributed prominently to various social movements in the United States over the past 60 years. From reproductive justice to civil rights, from environmental activism to women's and LGBT rights, and others. You will explore the lives of these women through the use of interactive timelines, oral history transcripts, and video narratives. Within our online community, you will discuss and debate how these political, psychological theories are applicable, and together, create new understandings and analyses. Course materials will make extensive use of the Smith College Sophia Smith Collection, the oldest and one of the largest collections of women's history in the world. Join us as we explore the lives, motivations, and stories of some of recent history's influential North American activists and analyze the frameworks and forces that shape their roles as advocates for social change. When I came into the archives, I thought that this project would be data collection and data extraction. We would be working with these boxes of materials and extracting the relevant information, piecing it together and presenting it to a large audience. But working with someone's personal material, you're over the course of the semester developing this relationship with that person and you get to know so many private aspects of their lives. There were some things that just really resonated with me. There are some traumatic experiences in her life that I think really shaped her activism later on. Instead of me rewriting those stories for the timeline, I used her exact quotes from the oral history. I thought that was a more authentic way of presenting those really personal stories. The most important thing that I learned in this class was that last page of Loretta Ross's oral history, which was talking about how our heroes can't be perfect, and that's because they're people. As someone who would like to pursue a career in reproductive justice, that's something that I need to keep in mind. I don't need to be perfect. My role models aren't perfect, but we all are engaging in this perfect cause. One of the things that's kind of fascinating about academic theories is that they try to silo things into neat little rows and neat little boxes. But when you really apply those theories to real world and the real people, it turns out that we're mixed up in all the boxes. And so when I saw that pathway in the theory that was very intensely personal and how people went into either self-care or self-destruction, I said, okay, that's one way to deal with relative deprivation. And then there's the other pathway that went into social change, sometimes positively, sometimes negatively. I said, that's another way. And so when I saw those two theories, I said, but I'm both. Because I did not take care of myself. And I went into the depression so much so that I had to have therapy to come out of it. I became intensely suicidal as I internalized all the trauma and the rapes and the things that had happened to me. But the key to saving my life was to turn my rage that I was visiting on myself into social justice activism. And then even to transform that because rage is not a sustainable emotion as a social justice activism because it ends up eating you up rather than the victim or the person who should be affected by your rage. And so I had to learn to transform that rage into a passion for justice or a passion for human rights, or even to sound corny, love. Love the people that I actually am working against. And so within those theories, it showed me that we really do occupy 
that victimized violator place at the same time, that place where we're self-destructive, but we can also be socially good or we can be socially destructive and personally good. And I'm looking for that intersectional psychological theory that manages to describe being situated in both places at the same time.